thank you for tuning in to Car Rider Line. I'm Sydney Hunt, Senior Communications Specialist for Clear Creek ISD. And I'm, today I'm joined by some familiar faces to the podcast. Uh, Ms. David West, CCISD's Director of Counseling and Student Services, and Christina Ford, Assistant Director of Counseling and Student Services. Welcome back. Thank you. So a few weeks ago, uh, the three of us talked about the course selection process for e- intermediate and high school students that's currently ongoing uh, through February 23rd. Um, and so if you missed that episode, so you can always go back and watch that or listen to it in your podcast apps. But today, um, we are going to be talking about more, some more information about um, planning for high school and how students can make the most of their four years. And before we do that, I do want to mention that tonight, February 16th, um, if you're watching us live today, uh, each of our high schools is hosting an information night for incoming ninth grade families at 6 p.m. So that's a great way to get more information and um, specific opportunities at your zoned uh, high school campus. So uh, 6 p.m. tonight, February 16th at your zoned high school. Uh, So let's start with high school credits and graduation requirements. Can you talk through those? Absolutely. High school credits for those of us coming from intermediate school is something new um, because in intermediate school, you don't have to worry about credits. You're looking about passing grades and being promoted to the next grade level. So it's really important that throughout your high school career, you understand how credits work. So throughout high school, each high school offers seven classes a day, and each of those credit classes can earn you credits. So if you look on the screen, we know that each semester course that's passed with a 70 or a higher, is gonna get you 0.5 credits each semester. In one semester, a student can earn the equivalent of 3.5 credits for seven semester classes. It's important to know also that year-long classes might average out your grades. So we'll look at the chart in a second, but if you don't do so good first semester, and maybe you do really well that second semester, we can average those two grades together, and that will earn you full credit for your class. And so remember, in high school, it's really important that as you're looking at earning credits, In order to be promoted or classified to that next grade, it's all based on credits. So if you're a freshman and wanting to be promoted as a 10th grader, you have to have earned and received credit for six credits. Then to be promoted to 11th grader, you have to have earned credit for 12 credits. And then to be a 12th grader, you have to have 18 credits. But there's more than just passing grades that goes into earning credit. So if you look at the chart on the right, you can see that this student for English 1, you see that they got a 78 semester 1 and a 90 semester 2. But then you look over in that credits and they only received half a credit or 0.5 credit. And if you look by that 78, you see a little asterisk in there. That's because that student's attendance did not meet the requirement of 90% of attendance in classes. So there are things that we do within our high schools to help students earn that uh, credit back for attendance. So that is something to be very cognizant of when you're going to class, that your attendance matters. And it's not just attendance in one period. It's attendance in every single class that you're trying to earn your credit for. So for those of us that are just starting high school, it's a little bit different than we're used to. So it's really important that attendance in every class matters to get those credits and to be classified as a different grade level as you move on. If you look below that, you'll notice that the student um, in biology got a 53 and a 75 for semester two and only earned 0.5 credits. So because of that 53, we were not able to average to earn one whole credit. And so that student is going to have to recover credit for that first semester of biology. And we will share with you in a little bit all different ways that we can do that. So that's a little quick brief overview of credits. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about more resources as we go that you can really start to understand more of how you earn credits. Also something new when you get into high school and throughout your high school career is that we really want you to understand the graduation requirements so that you can finish your high school career successfully. So graduation requirement, the plan that we have is foundation high school program and you've got to declare an endorsement. And this means that over the duration of your high school career, you earn 26 credits. If you remember, I said high schools have seven credits uh, per day. So really a high schooler, if they take all seven classes, will have 28 credits. So a lot of our seniors graduate with more credits than is required for graduation. Mm -hmm. 
If you look on the screen, the state does require you to have certain courses in order to graduate. So there are certain courses that you have to take, and then there's some flexibility for, for you to find your passion, find what you enjoy, and really explore those different endorsements that Ms. West is going to talk about in a second, but find your passion. So you've got to have four English classes or credits, I apologize, four credits for math, four credits for science, three for social studies, two credits in world language. And what I want to note on your world language is it needs to be the same world language. So let's say one year you take French and you decide French isn't for you and you want to maybe move to Spanish. You then have to take two years of Spanish to meet that graduation requirement. So it's okay to explore different languages that you like. Just make sure that you understand that what that graduation requirement is. Then one credit in fine arts one credit in PE, and then those fun seven elective credits. That's where you really get to look at your endorsement and your passion. And there is also some testing that goes into graduation requirements. There are some of those required classes that require end of course exams. So you see on the screen, you have to take one after English one, English two, algebra one, biology, and US history. So those are some important end of course exams. So. We also want to talk about a different diploma that you can get, and that's called Distinguished Level of Achievement. And this gets your foundation high school program, which we just talked about, with the endorsement, but there's a requirement on that. What they require is that for, remember how I talked about you had to have two required math credits and then two math credits of your choice? To get Distinguished Level of Achievement, you have to take Algebra 2, which is a great course if you're looking for college readiness, which we'll talk about in a little bit. It's a really good course to take if you're looking for Distinguished Level of Achievement. Also, if you graduate with Distinguished Level of Achievement, it makes you um, a available to maybe take um, or eligible to maybe take advantage of that top 10% automatic admissions to Texas public schools. There are additional requirements for that. So we ask you to look into that to make sure that you understand those requirements. So a couple times I've mentioned endorsements and endorsements have a lot of different meaning towards that. So I'm going to let Ms. West kind of explain what endorsements mean. Thanks, Christina. So an endorsement is an opportunity for you to find your passion. And we have five different endorsements in the state of Texas, and that's an overarching goal for students. And yes, in eighth grade, most of our eighth graders are either currently figuring out what endorsement they want to follow or they have already figured out because they had a class in the fall. If you have a ninth, um, if you have a current ninth through 12th grader, they should be able to tell you what their endorsement is. Mm -hmm. Because the endorsement does kind of drive what elective courses that they take. Because each endorsement has a pathway, and that pathway is a group of classes that they have to take in order to meet the requirement of that endorsement. So we're going to look at a little bit of the, we're going to look at some of the endorsements. So our first endorsement is the STEM, science, science, technology, engineering, and math. And those are for students whose passion may be math, maybe science, maybe engineering. We have some amazing engineering classes. We have amazing biotechnology classes, computer science, cyber uh, security now. Mm -hmm. So if that is your area of passion, you might choose the STEM endorsement. Now, again, we mentioned those pathways. They're, it's a CTE, a science, a math, or a STEM combo. So those pathways kind of dictate what courses you have. You can't just declare STEM and then not take any STEM classes right. and earn a STEM <laughs> endorsement. So if your child's passion is STEM, um, this might be a great endorsement. And what I will also say about endorsement is we have our students declare one endorsement because it's much easier to follow one endorsement pathway uh, program. But at the end, when they graduate, we have many students that end up with three, four, five different, all, some of them all five different endorsements. And it's, it's sometimes it's really easy to figure out, but we really want kids to focus on one. And students can change their endorsement pathway in, like once a year during course selection. We kind of do a check, make sure everything's going on right um, to follow that endorsement. So we have STEM. We also have business and industry. So for our students who are interested in FFA, our, our new welding program, um, culinary arts, uh, debate, yearbook, newspaper, this is the endorsement for them. Again, underneath those pathways, if we're going to focus more on those CTE courses like our ag and our welding, that would be the pathway to lead to that business and industry endorsement. Bus uh, if your debate, newspaper, or yearbook, you kind of have your own pathway requirements to get that endorsement as well. Our third endorsement is public service. And so these are um, our education and training, like our uh, 
teacher education training, TET, where the mm-hmm. kid, where our students go out and work at elementary schools and, and they learn how to become a teacher. Our, our health science, um, our certified nursing assistant, our rotation classes, um, patient care classes. These are medical terminology. All of those fun things in the medical industry. This is the endorsement for you. Our cosmetology also falls under our amazing program at Clearview also follows under this endorsement. And then our amazing um, young men and women who are interested in the ROTC, you have your own pathway. And if you take some ROTC courses, you could classify, you could meet the standard for this endorsement. Our fourth endorsement has a lot of opportunities, a lot of different pathways. It's arts and humanities. And these are our multi-talented students who participate in visual and performing arts, or they're very passionate about world languages and culture. Um, They may be passionate about our social studies classes because we do have a few social studies classes outside those required courses that you can take to find your interest. Or maybe English language arts is your passion. And we have literary genre, our journalism that can go toward this particular pathway. So again, this is a great opportunity. Like if I know I'm going to be in band for all four years because that is my passion, we have invested in private lessons. We have impressed, um, invested in an instrument. I can't wait for Friday night football. And I know that this is what I'm going to do. You have a pathway and an endorsement built for you. That doesn't mean I can only take courses in this endorsement. I can then still take other classes. I can still take an engineering class. I can still take an ag class, but I have a pathway and I'm going to get an endorsement and that's what we're looking for. And then our final endorsement is multidisciplinary. And so I like to say that, I mean, our students, our incoming eighth graders are 13, 14 years old. They might not even know what's Mm -hmm. offered yet at the high school. So the multidisciplinary is a great endorsement for those students who are still trying to find their passion. Um, So there's a lot of different ways. As long as you're taking some, the one that's the easiest is the four core courses. As long as I'm taking four Englishes and four maths, four science, four social studies, I'm on track for that multidisciplinary. There are a few additional requirements, like if you're going to be STEM, you do actually have to take Algebra 2 as a part of that endorsement. Um, You do have to take Chemistry and Physics as part of some of your core courses to meet the standard for STEM. Multidisciplinary, for that 4 by 4 you actually have to take English 4, not an alternative for an English 4, or you have to take Chemistry or Physics. So built in those endorsements are some specialty things within that endorsement, but all very easy and attainable. Our students that are interested in dual credit, also multidisciplinary, would be a great option for them. And then the last bit of high school graduation requirements is what we like to call performance acknowledgments. Now, performance acknowledgments actually don't populate until your student graduates because we have to review their entire academic history to see if they meet the standards for performance acknowledgments. And if they do, it is dropped on their final transcript. Areas that we look at are dual credit. If they have taken multiple classes in dual credit, they might earn a performance acknowledgement. If they um, excel in both English and a world languages and culture, they might earn a a performance acknowledgement for bilingualism and biliteracy. If they do well on their um, advanced placement test, so if they take an advanced placement course and they score a three or higher, they could earn a performance acknowledgement for that. If they excel on their PSAT or their SAT or their ACT scores, if they reach a certain level, they could earn a performance acknowledgement for that. And then I think you guys had our amazing CTE Mm -hmm. um, team on here, and they talked about all of our industry standard courses, uh, Mm -hmm. courses that we have, our courses that lead to those industry standards, uh, licenses, I should say. And some of those licensures could lead to performance acknowledgement well. So this, again, this is kind of like a final stamp on that final transcript of this is some more of the amazing work that I did in high school. So that's pretty much what a performance acknowledgement um, entails. And we have a question um, that kind of ties into our next, uh, my next question. And we have someone say culinary arts is only available for certain grades. Has that changed? Talking about um, the the CTE endorsement. Yes, yeah, CTE yes. specialty. I mean, there's there's courses that are offered at each grade level. Correct. Um, and then our specialty programs do have to have other courses underneath that. Correct. So let's take so let's take culinary arts for example. 
most of the time our students can't do culinary arts until 11th and 12th grade, sometimes maybe 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. And a typical pathway in the endorsement that leads to that endorsement is usually about four courses, so mm -hmm. four CTE courses. So even though I might not be, let's say, at Clear Springs or I'm going to travel my 11th and 12th grade year, those first two courses, I'm kind of like, oh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe a nutrition and wellness. Mm -hmm. We have, we have uh, information in the EPG that lets you kind of guide what those right. other two courses. And the other good thing is those a lot of our CTE courses like culinary arts, I'm pretty sure it's two credits. Right. So if I only need four credits in that pathway and I take two classes that are each two period of each, my culinary You're arts, I've yeah. done, I've covered it. And so then all my other electives that I need can be whatever I want at my right. own, at, at my current, um, my home high school. So it is, it is, if we're doing those specialty programs and they're only 11th mm -hmm. and 12th, you still 100, like cosmetology, three credits. Mm -hmm. That pathway only takes four. So if I take one, one college, more. yeah, mm -hmm. I'm set. So And there are courses that relate to that pathway Correct. and to that uh, CTE pro specialty program. Yeah. So, so it's, those are the programs that actually make following that endorsement really easy. Right. So that leads us into... Um, the course selection process, uh, like we said, we covered it in depth a few episodes ago, um, but can we touch on what incoming 9th through 12th grade families uh, should be doing right now for this? Absolutely. Course selection is a really fun, really exciting time of the year, and we are in the thick of it right now. So during course selection, each incoming 9th grader is actually going to receive a physical copy of the educational planning guide Ms. West was just talking about. Our 10th through 12th graders, if they need a copy, go to the Counseling Center. You can ask for one. You can also find it online at ccisd.net backslash course selection. That's that catalog that really is going to guide you in selecting the courses to make sure you're, you're following the pathway to get to your endorsement. It'll help you guide you to make sure you're making those selecting the correct classes for you. You're also going to get a couple other documents, a course planning worksheet and a campus course list. While our EPG goes over every possible class in CCISD. Not all classes make on every campus based on student interest, and not all classes, especially those programs that Ms. West was just talking about, are offered on every campus. For the programs, it doesn't mean you can't take them. You need to look into that, but it does, that course list is really going to guide you in helping make those choices that are best for you and your campus. So, Use that edu educational planning guide to look about anything that we're talking about today. It's The educational planning guide is going to go so much more in depth on everything that we're saying. So it's just a great guide for you. And then you want to make sure you use your course selection planning worksheet and your course list. That's just a planning tool for you to make sure you're on track. Once you look at that planning worksheet, look at that course listing, know the courses that are going to help you follow your passion, you need to go on to Skyward Student. That's where you're going to actually enter those course requests. If you need directions on how to do it, it's also on our webpage at the course select ccisd.net backslash course selection, or go to your campus counselors. They will have instructions for you on how to enter those requests on Skyward. One quick plug for Skyward is please also enter those alternates. Those alternates are so important. We always try to get your number one choices, but because of student interest in different classes making and a variety of different reasons, we may want have to go to your alternates. And it's so important that you put those in online so that as our counselors and administrators are working on schedules for next year, we can really honor the, your choices. So we are introducing something new for next school year for high school students. Can you talk through flexible scheduling and why it is being offered? Yes. So we are um, offering flexible scheduling this year. It's new this year. It is off campus learning. Um, we understand that our students and our families may have a variety of needs. And so we are trying to find different ways to meet the students' individualized learning. Mm -hmm. And with the success of some of our um online learning because of COVID, we have realized that some of our students can be successful. And even prior to COVID, we had online learning. Right. We had had clear access for at least oh. 10 years, oh, for yeah. longer than that, mm -hmm. probably. So we know that some of our students can be successful um, on online learning. So 
to start this year, we are going to have some classes that um, students can choose for flexible scheduling. Flexible scheduling will either be first period or seventh period. You do have to have transportation to school or away from school if you're choosing flexible scheduling. But basically, if I choose flexible scheduling first period, I don't have to come to campus until second period. Mm -hmm. So maybe I get to, maybe I work late or I work on, I work better on my coursework right. at later and I need to wake up a little bit later. That might be an ideal. Now it's going to be blocked in first period, but that doesn't mean that you have to do the course coursework during first period. Right. Um, means you can do it in the afternoon if you choose to. Um, it is CCISD curriculum. It is not ingenuity. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a CCISD teacher. There are deadlines and tests mm -hmm. and different things like that. It's usually, it's done through the It's Learning platform. So your student could potentially go to tutorials for that course because that teacher is gonna be on that campus. Right. So again, if I'm doing first period flexible scheduling, I would not have to arrive until second period. If I'm doing seventh period flexible scheduling, I would not have to arrive until after, uh, I could leave after sixth period. Um, so we have, a couple of different courses. They're all level two courses. So they're all on level courses for this school year. We have world geography. So that's something that our ninth graders might be interested in. We have English four, which is something our seniors might be interested in. Mm -hmm. Government economics, which again, those might be what our seniors are interested in. And we also have personal financial literacy and psychology. So those are some that a, ninth, a 10th grader and 11th grader could participate in. And even uh, the personal financial literacy a freshman could. Now, a couple of those are half credit classes, like personal financial mm -hmm. literacy and psychology are both um, half credit classes. So you may be able to get flexible scheduling for one semester, one semester. but you may have to come for brick and mortar the second semester. Um, since it is part of your school day, since it's part of one through seven period, those classes do count in your GPA. So our clear access program is outside the school day. Mm -hmm. So those do not count in your GPA. But if you're choosing to do flexible scheduling, that does um, that is included in your GPA. Again, they're all computer based mm -hmm. and very important to know. It is our CCISD curriculum being taught asynchronously and monitored by a CCISD teacher that's certified in that subject area. What I will also say is we do have to, just like Ms. Ford mentioned on um, course selection is very important for our families to make this decision because if we have a campus that not enough students sign up that they're interested in it, it's very possible that it won't be offered at that campus because mm -hmm. we do have to have a certain number of students sign up for it right. in order for it to make, as we like to call it. So it's a great opportunity. We're going to try it this year to see how it goes. And so it's a great option for, for 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders if they want to try something um, a little more individualized that will work for them. And it kind of, it reflects at the college level online campus or online courses at the uh, college level as yeah. well. So currently, we've already had some yeah. of our dual credit students that um, even again, this is all before COVID. Some right. of our dual credit students are 11th and 12th graders. When working with our community um, school partnerships, have had online opportunities for dual credit. Um, through that program. So we know that students can be successful. And what I will also say is this, one of the questions that was brought up by one of our counselors is, well, let's say I try it and I realize I'm not being very successful. Right. Can I come back to brick and mortar? And you absolutely can. That is not a problem. But is your grade from that course, whatever it is, would then transfer into the course on campus that you would move to. So it's not like a complete do over. It's what you're doing in that course is still going to get transferred into that course. And so this is this is new, brand new. And so uh, there's opportunities to expand on this. Yes. After and uh, we did have an, a question about honors um, being offered. Uh, currently this year we are not offering honors level courses. Um, what we what we know and what we kind of learned in um, through a little bit of COVID too is the material and the rigor and the direction and the support that is required mm -hmm. in honors. That's really done better face to face. Mm -hmm. Our students tend to be more successful. And I'm not saying that we didn't have students that weren't successful. Right. That, I mean we we did, but we just found that we have to start somewhere. So again, it, we're going to start with our on level courses to right. see how it works out. And and then we'll see um, where we go from there. Ways to expand. Yep. Awesome. Well, that's exciting for all high school students. Yes. Opportunities for uh, every grade level. So let's talk about, since it, since those courses do apply to GPA and class rank, um, that's an important topic for 
all high school students uh, and to start off strong for our incoming ninth grade families. Uh, what is the process in calculating this? It's a great question. So GPA is grade point average and CCISD operates on a weighted five point scale. So Sydney, you just said that it's really important for our incoming ninth graders to understand this because starting day one, first grades is going to all the grades that you make starting in ninth grade are going to count towards that GPA. And so I just men mentioned a second ago, it's on a five point scale in CCISD. So all of our classes are weighted a little bit differently. We have level one, we have level two, and level three courses that all get different points assigned for your grade point based on the the grades that you make in that class. And so our level one courses are our honors, our advanced placement AP classes. So those are the classes that have a little bit more rigor. They get some different grade points in our on-level courses. If you want to see the exact chart the layout of exactly grade for grade point and level coursework. It's all in our in our educational planning guide. So we really encourage you to look at that page. You can look in the index. It'll tell you exactly where to find that. But when do we calculate it? Students always want to know that. So as we're going through your coursework, there's different times based on your grade level that we calculate it. If you're in ninth and 10th grade, we do that one time of the year after all the grades are in. So we look at all the grades, all the semester that you've done and we calculate your GPA based on that. If you're in 11th and 12th grade, we do at the very end of each semester so that you can get your most up-to-date GPA as you take your courses. But we have to do it at the end of the semester because it's based on the grades you earn and the credits you earn. So that's why at 11 and 12th, we do it per semester. Grade point average is also very important to determine your class rank. So as we're calculating at the end of the year for 9th and 12th, um, or anytime when we're calculating GPA, that's how, what we use to, to determine your class rank. So we take that GPA, and we take your total number of grade points that you've earned, and we divide it by the total number of semester units that you've attempted, and that's going to give you your class rank. Because of the scale that we have, we very rarely see people sharing class ranks or different things, and that is how we determine that. And one of the things I'll also say about class rank is it also one of the other big components of that is your class size. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times our freshman classes start off a little bit bigger mm -hmm. than our senior classes, our junior classes, and, and it just is a process of what happens when students get older, um, people move away, they might find other mm -hmm. routes. Um, and so... Again, your your rank is kind of also tied to how many students you go to school with as well. So while you might be in the top 10% at one school, it can only have 500 students where you might not be in the top 10% in another one of our schools right. because we have 650 right. students. So it just also depends on that class on size. So we often hear common misconceptions about extracurriculars and uh, throughout high school and then having to choose between that and having a good GPA. So can you give some insight into some trends that we in CCIC are seeing throughout the years uh, that kind of goes against having to choose? So um, this year we did a study of the class of 2018, 2019, and 2020. And we looked at the top 10, not top 10%, mm -hmm. the top 10 ranked students in those classes. So it was about 150 students. And what we found is that 26% of those students took a fine art or athletic class all four years in high school. Mm -hmm. So to say that I can't be in the top 10% right. if I take an extracurricular activity, well, we 26% of these students were involved in something all four years. Right. Um, and, and among like the top 10 students again, Orchestra 4 was the 18th most popular course taken of, of, of those kids. Um, and Band 4 was the 21st most popular course taken among those amazing students. So I know a lot of times, especially like I've heard it a little bit, I've done band or orchestra or athletics mm -hmm. in intermediate because it's a great opportunity. And while I'm not going to do that anymore because I really, uh, Miss Ford mentioned earlier that automatic admission. So in Texas, we have automatic admission if you're in the top 10% mm -hmm. um, of your graduate graduating class, you are guaranteed admission to any public state university with the exception of the University of Texas at Austin, which still is the top 6%. So a lot of our students like that is one of their goals. Well, that's one of their schools that they're really passionate right. and want to get into. They may have other schools that they're interested to, but that is like a goal that they set for themselves. And so what we want to say also is while GPA and rank is very important and our students in the class 2018, 2019, and mm -hmm. 2020 have showed that 
26 percent of them that this is totally possible to right. do um colleges and universities yeah we're going to talk about this too a little bit more. college and universities are interested in that ranking gpa but they are also looking for well-rounded students the whole student the whole student mm -hmm. and so um we just know that i mean i, I we've seen valedictorians and salutatorians mm -hmm. that have been in band orchestra choir wrestling all of these amazing programs and they're still able to achieve those honors at graduation so to think it can't be done we now have some some, some data, data some factual some data. Factual data to show that yes you actually can do this and i think we've heard time and time again from all department heads even you know if even if you're in debate or some of our marketing classes or clubs we have hundreds of clubs that are offered you know getting involved is so important and finding what you're passionate about i think we touched on this in course selection episode but finding that passion and getting involved really helps the whole student succeed. And our teachers, our coaches, our sponsors, everyone who is involved in these extracurriculars really reinforces that. And, and most of these, you have to have good grades yes. to, to participate. To so UIL, it, no pass, no play. Exactly. Right? So you actually have to pass your courses right. in order to participate in these organizations. Right. Um, but I think Ms. Ford mentioned it in our previous presentation. It's about finding your family. It's mm -hmm. about what brings you to campus. And really, these programs do such an amazing job of that. And there's right. so many different ones that you can be a part of. And, so. So fl and they're flexible, too. Mm -hmm. I yes. think every single coach, sponsor, whoever would say academics comes first. Yes. And you and rightfully so. And so I don't think that there should ever be a deterrence from, oh, I'm going to start later in, in my high school career for to get involved mm -hmm. because that's really – you're finding out your passion throughout your four years. Correct. So – we offer ways for students to have higher levels of success in courses and also alternate ways to earn credit. So can you talk through those um, Absolutely. different options? Yeah. So we were just talking about different ways to get involved. And so what you also want to think about is balance. You want to find your passion and, and figure out what is that balance. So one of the things that we offer, and we I just talked about this when I was talking about GPA and class rank, was honors level coursework, pre or AP, honors level, on level. And there are some benefits fits to having honors coursework. Really, if you take those courses, what it's helping you do is acquire different, deeper level thinking. It's going to help prepare you for higher level high school courses and really prepare you for college mm -hmm. level courses. There's priority in different, deep, complex thinking. But beyond that, we really want you to take into consideration some different things when you're thinking about selecting that. Something we don't have on there is the balance, right? What do you want to balance? Do you want to make sure that your academics could be a passion and so could a fine art? So how are we making sure we find time in the day for all of those? But if you're thinking about choosing it, think about are, are you or is your student able to prioritize their time? You know, can they prioritize interests? Because honors level coursework does take a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It takes time outside for studying and different things. So you want to make sure you can prioritize that time. Do you have a work, strong work ethic? Um, um, and independent study habits are very important for different courses. So you just want to make sure that you're thinking and, and it's okay to try. We encourage students to try all the time what they think they're interested in. But really think, are these courses right for you? And you also mentioned, mentioned alternative ways to earn credit. So I want to mention, when I was speaking about GPA, and Ms. West alluded to this also, GPA is only taken into consideration for courses taken within the school day. So not all of these alternative ways to earn credit in CCISD count towards your GPA, but they're great ways to earn those 26 credits for our students for a variety of different reasons. There's CCISD summer school that we hold every summer. There's credit recovery. Let's say we talked about that student who didn't get credit for biology at the very beginning. Beginning. Maybe they need to take credit recovery so they can work on earning those other credits. We have clear access. Ms. Weston mentioned that a little bit ago. That's an online learning platform that we've been doing for years. And so it's another way to earn credit. We have distance learning, credit by exam, dual credit, and credit recovery. So we really want to provide students and families with different ways that they can earn credit. If you think you're interested about these or it sounds something you're like, I want to learn more, please go talk to your counselors. Your counselors would be very happy to look at you, look at your success, look at your future plans, and pick what might be best for you. So we really encourage if you're interested, seek out your campus counselor. 
And like we said, it's never too early to start thinking about college or plans for after graduation. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what are some final tips uh, we can give our families listening and watching um, to keep in mind for planning for that? So, excuse me, for our Mm -hmm. incoming ninth grader, uh, ninth ninth grade parents, you might be like, college really already? Like, we have (laughs) to talk about that now. Um, But for our parents that may be having a current 10th grader moving into that 11th grade or that 11th grader moving into 12th grade, some tips to remember. For college admission purposes... Colleges only evaluate your first six semesters in high school. So that would be two semesters your freshman year, two semesters your sophomore year, and two semesters your junior year. It's not to say what you do your senior year is not important. It is. You still have to send that final transcript. You still have to send that. Um, And you do, some colleges actually require, uh, as part of their application process, you have to show what courses you're taking your senior year. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as like that transcript that gets sent to the college for admission purposes, it's those first six semesters. And some of the things that they are looking for is what both of us have been talking about. Um, One of the big things they look for is rigor and passion. Mm -hmm. So... If you haven't stepped out, I think we used this the last time, it might be time to consider stepping out of that comfort zone Mm -hmm. and moving into that courage zone Mm -hmm. and looking at some of those honors level classes Mm -hmm. or some of those AP classes because it's that rigor more and more and more colleges when they do surveys for colleges. That is what they're looking for. That transcript with that picture of rigor that you are showing success in, that is what they're wanting to do and balance and interest. So um, they want to see that you're interested in it. If you are one to go to Texas A&M and be an engineer, they're going to need to see some science or some math or some engineering mm-hmm. classes to show that that is what your interest is. Um, so the other thing we'd like to encourage is while high school graduation requirements um, are, are needed to graduate from high school, sometimes colleges can set higher um, admission requirements. Mm-hmm. So especially usually if you go outside of the state of Texas, like in, to graduate from high school, you only need three credits worth of social studies. But if you look at some private schools or some schools outside of the state of Texas, they might require four credits. So that's something when you're planning out college, mm-hmm. uh, high school, that you want to take into consideration. We require two credits of foreign language in our world languages and culture in order to graduate. There are some colleges um, that may say two are required, but three are preferred. Mm-hmm. So if you want to look a little bit better when you're doing that tra- that uh, application, you may want to take those things into consideration. So believe it or not, it's not too early to start looking at those college mm-hmm. websites to look at what those admission requirements look at. And then again, we've mentioned this a couple of times before, while GPA and rank, that is something that admission criteria um, that they look at for admission purposes. Um, they want to see that you're being successful, but that is not the be all end all. Yes, with the admit automatic admission, it is a part of it. But again, even with that automatic admission, it guarantees you a spot to, let's say, the University of Texas at Austin, but it doesn't guarantee you a spot in the college of your choice. Right. So I might want to go to the School of Business. My, I might not have those other things, those interests, those extracurricular mm-hmm. activities that get me into that college. Mm-hmm. So I get to go to UT, but I might not get to go to the college within that what university that, that I want in. to. So I, I know Good it sounds tip. like a lot, but this no, is the time all, to yeah. really start developing. And yeah. the last thing I'll say is like our, inc- again, I know I'm talking to some parents who have eighth grade students right now and they're like, oh, I'm like 13 <laughs> and 14. And um, that GPA does start. The first August day of school. <laughs> 2022 is when that GPA and rank are going to start. And again, that's not the be all end all. That is also when your transcript starts to develop right. and the things that you're mm-hmm. interested in. So just some things to consider for this yeah. journey through high school. And so our incoming uh, ninth grade parents, our current eighth grade families, you can go to the parent night tonight at your zoned high school campus at 6 p.m. Get some more information, specific offerings at your high school campus, and maybe sit down and talk with your with your student or students about, you know, what y'all learned, mm-hmm. uh, what you learned from this episode, what you learned from your campus, and uh, just really start having those conversations and it won't seem so overwhelming throughout each year if if you start them right now, correct? Correct. And counselors so are always going to be there to support you during this journey. Awesome. We do have one question and I know it's, um, it's flex, it's with the flexible scheduling, um, flexibility as to when tests are taken in flex classes or will there be set times when students must log in for this? There will be set times. So there, the very much some of our families experienced a little bit of ingenuity last year, which was a little more at your own pace. This is not at your own pace. There's going to be due dates for assignments. Mm -hmm. There's going to be specific time parameters in which you will have to log into tests. So um, 
again, some of those study habits that Ms. Ford was mentioning, mm -hmm. even though that was like for honors classes, if you're doing online learning, some of those those independent study skills, some, some time management are going to be required for the online learning as well. Perfect. And we have a few kind of student specific question. So where can families go for um, more help? They can go to the parent night tonight, but after that, um, if they want to get some more information before the uh, February 23rd deadline for course selection, where can they go? If they are a current eighth grade student, they can reach out to their current eighth grade counselor and those counselors are well versed in all things high school. If they're a current high school student, you can go and have a conversation with your, you, if you're a parent, you can email your student's high school counselor um, or you can encourage and advocate, have your student practice some of those advocacy mm -hmm. skills that they're going to need when they move on and have them go have a conversation. I can tell you those yeah. conversations are already <laughs> happening yes. across the district. Right. We are we're, we have been hearing from counselors who have, I can't call you right now. I have a student in my class talking about course selection. <laughs> yes. I can't call you right now. So we right. know that. So practicing that advocacy, it's happening. Mm -hmm. it's happening. Awesome. And uh, you can visit ccic.net slash course selection. And um, also all the counselors are listed on the campus pages on our website at ccisd.net. Is there anything else you think we missed or we didn't touch on? If you are reaching, I will say this. Mm -hmm. This is a busy time. Yes. yes. It is a busy time <laughs> of year. So if you are reaching out via email, just please understand there's a lot going on and that it may take a couple of days or hopefully they're going to respond and they're amazing at responding as soon as possible. But just understand that that response might not, that phone call, you may have to leave a message and they'll call you back. Right. That email, it, we got, there's a lot, they're working with students first during the day. Right. And so it may take some time for them to respond. Right. And please talk with your student, have those conversations, but make sure to have those course requests in by February 23rd. February 23rd. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you both for being here again. And we are also all so fortunate to hear from you. Um, that's it for this episode of Car Rider Line. Uh, we'll be back in a few weeks uh, for a new episode. Uh, this video will be available for playback. Um, and we'll also publish the, um, the screenshot of the presentation that was shown in the show notes. You can subscribe to Car Rider Line um, by searching wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, but until next time, uh, we'll see you then. <laughs>